Bill Forrester had spent most of his adult life as an avid reader and an eloquent speaker. Communication for my father, that kind of defined his, his life and his existence. Anyone who knows Bill Forrester, they know him as a very chatty person. Growing up on Cleveland's west side, Forrester was an articulate, expressive teen, sporting a six-string electric guitar, playing in a garage band. After high school, he traveled the world in the Navy and earned a college degree in business. Later, Forrester put his communication skills to work as a negotiator for the Department of Labor, an instructor at Lorain County Community College, a realtor, and the hub of the family. Here's the guy that answered all the questions, and he was the head of the family, and he was the one with all the answers. And for that to be taken away right away, it was, it was a heavy burden. 18 days after his stroke, Forrester was released from the hospital. Open your mouth and say, A. 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 Good. A few days later, he began what would be almost two years of outpatient speech therapy for a condition called aphasia. Aphasia is, in broad terms, any kind of a problem with your ability to either understand or communicate the content of language. As Forrester's wife researched the topic, she found few success stories. It's really hard to find positive, uplifting, hopeful stories that really don't conclude with they've accepted their fate. I've, I read a, a bunch of stories like that and I don't want to hear that. As a wife and a mother, how did you deal with your family's life being turned totally upside down? Bill got settled in at home again and we realized what we were facing. It was just about to make his life easy so that he could focus on his recovery. And that meant my role changed, our daughter's role changed, his son's role changed. I need help for my phrases. Right? Okay. Our daughter, who was in seventh grade when this happened, she had to start teaching her dad, helping her dad learn how to identify letters. It's humbling to sit with your, your dad, mm -hmm. teach him his ABCs and how to uh, articulate or manipulate his tongue so he could pronounce A or B, something so, uh, so, something so trivial and something we take for granted. Mandatory. Try it again. Man, da, da, D A. Okay. We started with vowels, and we um, worked on up to consonants, and then on to words, phrases, and then eventually sentences. Bill was pretty tireless in practicing and constantly working. He made it his job. And with time, came progress. you to the possibility. Good job. <laughs> My phrases is coming back, uh, like uh, vowels, um, words, uh, vocabulary. Now it's phrases coming back. So it's, it's funny, you know, f for me. Ready? Ready, set, go. Besides talking, Forrester, who is right-handed, had to relearn how to move his right arm, hand, and fingers. For all stroke patients, the key to recovering function, be it movement or speech, is like repetition. This? Repeating exercises help strengthen muscles. Repetition also allows the brain to build new connections so healthy parts can take over for the damaged ones. So what we have to do is take the good parts of the brain that are near the damaged parts in other parts of the brain, any part we can basically, and try to basically convince or encourage those nerves to literally sprout new connections. Control the stimulus. One therapy to achieve this involves using low doses of electrical currents on affected limbs. It's called functional electrical stimulation, or FES, and Cleveland has become a world leader in it. 
One system being studied uses a sensory glove on the patient's good hand to send electrical impulses to the weak hand. When the thought enters the brain to move the good hand, electrodes stimulate the weak one to also move. The goal is to encourage the brain to remodel itself to once again control movement of the compromised hand. The more repetition you get, the better. And if they practice long enough, the brain may reorganize and form new neural connections that reconnect the brain back to the muscles so that the patient doesn't need the stimulator anymore. When it came to regaining movement in his dominant hand, Bill Forrester got extra practice thanks to research at the Cleveland Clinic. Forrester became the first person in the country to participate in a research study for the hand mentor. I don't care. Um, I could um, try anything, you know, because I, I want to uh, be whole. Patients use the hand mentor at home, while a physical therapist at the hospital keeps tabs on their progress. Dr. Jay Alberts demonstrates how the system uses video game technology to help patients practice motion control. This is where we talk about the precision of control. You know, it's not about how strong are you, it's about how do you control your forces. I couldn't do this um, before. 62% of daily living activities involve the hands, which can be particularly problematic for stroke patients. Many stroke patients have problems doing functional activities with the hands primarily because they can't release their force. They can grab something hard, but they can't release it. So that's really the final aspect of skilled performance, is setting something down and releasing. Pressure's on. So seeing this, what kind mm -hmm. of progress? What do you think of when you see this progress? Oh, it's just amazing. He could not have picked up anything with his hand before. Another recent milestone for Forrester came when he picked up the guitar he bought 40 years ago, grasped the pick with his right hand, and began to strum. It's emotional. I thought uh, I couldn't do it. So when I did it, okay. All right. It's an old friend. And I have to think about uh, how could I play this chord. It's the same thing for my words now, but I could do it now. Everything is coming back, you know? <laughs>